on this mountain. This is the second night. The Bible tells us in Hosea chapter number 6 and verse 2 that after two days, he will revive us. In this second night on this mountain, revival is coming your way. In the name of Jesus. And principally, God sends his revival via his word. And that is why shortly the word of the Lord will be coming again. Since we began yesterday, his word has been coming line upon line, precept upon precept. But the good news is that God is not done with us yet. One thing is needful. In the school of enthronement, expectation is a major cause. Remember the brother that shared testimony here. One of them said, last year, I told myself I came anyhow. But I told myself I won't return anyhow. It will take the word of God for you to be transformed. It will take the word of God for you to be changed. And that is why very shortly we shall be upstanding to pray. Because you alone came here and you know exactly what you want to return with. The psalm is speaking in Psalm 119 and verse 18. He said, open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. One word from the throne of mercy is enough tonight to turn you to a wonder to your world. I'd like you to jump to your feet and lift up your voice and begin to ask the Lord to send one word to you. Father, send one word my way. I desire an encounter with your word. I desire an unforgettable encounter with your word. Father, I am hungry. Father, I am thirsty. Lord, you said, Lord, that you quench my thirst on this mountain. I desire a word from you. Put a word in the mouth of your servant just for me that will address my situation. Are you sure the Lord is hearing your voice tonight? Lift up your voice. Cry out unto him. I position myself for an unforgettable encounter. Father, visit me. Father, visit me. Father, touch me in every area of my life. Father, send your word that will terminate shame, terminate reproach in my life. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Because indeed, your word package for me that will enthrone me is coming my way tonight. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty, matchless name, we have prayed. Indeed, we are children born in due season. Indeed, this convention is your own convention. And what a joy we have our Father in the house tonight. God has put a word in his mouth just for us. With Jesus' joy, let's put our hands together as we welcome our Father as he comes to bless us tonight. Are you clapping for Jesus? Praise the Lord. No doubt. Everyone of you will be returning from here enthroned. Every trap of slavery, every trap of failure, every trap of stagnation, every trap of frustration shall be forever off your life. You never return the same way you came. Every session in this convention whether the main sessions or the workshops, the prayer times, every single session in this convention will be adding definite values to your life. <laughs> now, grace to put to work the things that God will be releasing and is been releasing to you, you need that grace. That is what makes it profitable. The things you won't do don't add no value to you. Be ye not, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, or you are deceiving yourself. 
Now, reach out your two hands to heaven and ask Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, give me grace to put to work every treasure of the world you release to me in this convention. The grace to put to work every treasure of the world you encounter. Receive it now. Receive that grace. Receive that grace now. The grace to put to work Every treasure of the world received, released to your life. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Father, thank you tonight for your manifest presence in this convention, both here at the Faith Tabernacle and across the nations of the earth. Thank you. Thank you for impartation of your word ever since this convention began. And thank you for what you have in stock for tonight. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let your word go for tonight and locate each one of us in our own unique areas. Let tonight be another point of reference in the life of everyone in future. May this convention be one you will never forget in a hurry. May the impact of this convention be forever in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. My case is different. Because I'm redeemed of the Lord. And as a covenant child, what affects others is not permitted to affect me. Congratulations. I have no doubt that God has been reaching out to you since you came. Do I have a witness? You've been intoxicated with the truth before you leave here. And you live under the influence of it forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight we'll be looking at this very important subject engaging the power of love for your enthronement. Engaging the power of love for your enthronement. We are redeemed as priests and kings to reign on the earth. So enthronement is our birthright and redemption. Revelation 5.10. But like every other provision in the kingdom, there are conditions to meet to actualize them. For instance, your healing and my healing has been fully paid for, but I must meet the faith condition to take delivery. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Do you believe that I, the son of man, am able to do this? Yeah, Lord. Okay, according to your faith. 
So our healing is delivered according to our faith. Yes, already provided for, the price fully paid, but you must meet the faith condition to get healed. Now, wait a minute. He became poor that we through his poverty might, through his poverty might be made rich. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. But you must meet the covenant demand to be empowered for wealth. If you will not give, no matter how long you live and how much you've been in church, it won't change your financial story. Giving is a non-negotiable requirement for you to enter into your heritage of wealth. So important. Where a city set on a hill, we can, I mean, that cannot be hidden. That's all right. That's our heritage. We are born for the top. But if you don't be diligent in your business, you, get, you never see the top. You never smell the top. Amen. You, you, you can't be a playboy and a playgirl and expect to be on the top. No. <laughs> it takes serious-minded people who know they don't have a spare life and desire to make the most of the one they have to smell the top. See, as that man that's diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, man. So you see, all of these provisions are settled in heaven, but can only be actualized on earth when you decide to, you know, fulfill the conditions for them. Salvation is a free gift of God. But if you won't repent, you won't be saved. You can be in church for one, 20 years. It doesn't matter. Until you choose to repent, you won't be changed. You, you won't be saved. So it will be theoretical salvation or religious salvation that has no earthly proofs. If any man becomes a new creature, if you are not a new creature, you are not saved. Amen. You, you are not saved. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Nothing has become new in your life. It says you are safe. That's not correct. That's not biblical. So as free as salvation is, there is what to do to be saved. That tells you every provision of the kingdom, though freely given, but <laughs> is released at a cost. Until you are willing to pay the price, you are not ready for it. Our entrollment is real. It has been fully paid for. But whether we now live an enthroned life or a downtrodden life is our choice. And one principal requirement for enthronement is love. And I'll be showing us from scriptures how that is. And trauma here implies to become a point of reference in your field. It implies being an authority in your endeavor. It implies reigning in your field. It implies being on top in your field of endeavor. Jesus was once asked, which is the greatest commandment of the law? And he answered, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Upon these two commandments, on these two commandments, hang 
all the laws and the prophets. 